this is the story of the great big slobbery small tooth dog. In a faraway land a long time ago, a rich man was set upon by robbers. When all of a sudden, out of the bushes, leapt a great big slobbery small tooth dog and chased the robbers away. Well, the rich man was really grateful. You saved my life, he said to the dog. I'm going to give you one of my greatest treasures as a reward. In my house, I have a golden fish that speaks a hundred languages. Would you like that for your reward? No, says the dog. I don't want that. Well, says the man, I do have a golden bird and the bird sings a thousand different songs. How about that bird for your reward? No, says the dog, I don't want that. Well, says the man, how about my golden goose? That goose lays a golden egg every single day. Would you like the goose for your reward? No, says the dog, I don't want that. I want your greatest treasure, and that's your beautiful daughter. Well, said the man, that's true. I had forgotten about my daughter, and she really is my greatest treasure. Come to the house tomorrow, and she shall be yours. So the, so the man has to go home and uh, tell his daughter what's happened, and she's not afraid, though. She says, you know, a, a promise is a promise, and I will go with the great big slobbery small tooth dog. So the next day when he arrives, he tells her about his house, and says, you're going to love it there. Climb up on my back and hold on to my fur and we'll head off to my house. So she does and off they go across the fields. And they come to a hedge where the dog leaps in a single bound. They continue over the fields a little more and they come to a second hedge and the, the dog leaps it in a single bound. And they come across the fields a little bit more to a third hedge where the dog leaps it in a single bound again. And then they come to the dog's house, which is really a castle with hundreds of rooms and beds with silk sheets and closets full of dresses made of satin and silk, all in just the girl's size and shelves of books, just the kind that she likes to read. And in the evenings they share dinner together and he tells the funniest stories and she laughs. In the afternoons, she throws him a golden ball and <clears throat> he brings it back again and she throws the ball and he brings it back again. And then they sit under the shade of a tree and he, the dog puts his head in her lap and she strokes his smelly fur and says, Good dog, you are sweet as honey. You are sweeter than honey. But at night, the girl is still lonely and she cries. She misses her father and... She says, I'm held prisoner here by this great slobbery small toothed dog. And a few days later, the dog hears her crying and comes to her and says, Why are you so unhappy? Don't I give you everything you need to be happy? And she says, Yes, everything. But I miss my father. Okay, says the dog. Well, we'll go and visit him. Climb up on my back and hold on to my fur and we'll set off. So off they go over the fields and they get to the first hedge and the dog turns back to her and says, Now, what is it that you call me? Sweet as honey, says the girl. Sweeter than honey. Yes, says the dog and leaps the hedge. They carry on across the fields and they get to the second hedge. And the dog turns back and says, Now, what is it that you call me? But the girl is thinking about being at home with her father now and mumbles under her breath, Great big slobbery small tooth dog. Woof, says the dog, wheels around and heads the other way, and she doesn't get to see her father that day. A few days later, she's crying again, and the dog comes to her and says, Okay, let's go, we'll visit your father. And she climbs up onto his back and grabs a hold of his smelly fur, and off they set. And she, they get to the first hedge and the dog turns back and says, Now, what is it that you call me? And the girl is determined to say nothing but nice things about the dog and says, Sweet as honey, sweeter than honey. Yes, says the dog and leaps the hedge. When they get to the second hedge, 
she says. I call you sweet as honey, sweeter than honey, when he asks. And he says, yes, and they leap the fence. When they get to the third hedge, she can see her house. And so when the dog asks her, she forgets again. And she says, great big slobbery small tooth dog. Woof, says the dog, and they wheel around and head home. And she doesn't see her father that day. Well, another few days pass, and the dog finds her crying once more and says, OK, I'll take you home. So they set off across the fields, and the girl really determined this time to remember to be nice to the dog. And at the first hedge, when he asks, she remembers to say, sweet as honey, sweeter than honey. And at the second hedge, when he asks her again, she remembers to say, sweet as honey, sweeter than honey. And even at the third hedge, when he says, what do you call me? She says, sweet as honey, sweeter than honey. And they get to the house, and the girl has her hand on the handle of the door. And when the dog asks her one last time, she turns and says, great big slobbery small tooth dog. And the dog looks up at her with such sadness in her eyes and looks so heartbroken that the girl looks back at him and says, oh dog, you really are sweet as honey, sweeter than honey. Yes, says the dog and throws off his fur when he becomes a handsome prince smallest teeth you ever did see. And they do live happily and in the afternoons she throws the ball and he brings it back again and she throws the ball and he brings it back again. And that is the story of the great big slobbery small tooth dog. The end.